well, let's just get straight into what kind of uh, kit you're using, for instance, just generally in terms of uh, on Interstellar or on uh, Fast and Furious 7. My main card, I have a Sonosax mixer, and I use the Diva, Zaxcom Diva recorder. I have a couple of those. I use um, Shep's, the CMC series microphones, um, predominantly indoors exclusively, I'd say. I use uh, Electrosonics Wireless with the Sync and COS uh, lavaliers pretty much all the time. And um, I use a lot of times when I'm doing exteriors, I like the Sankin CS3E as my outdoor shotgun, shotgun mic. But sometimes I'll use Shep's. If the environment is quiet enough, I'll just I'll use the Shep's. And if the shots are close enough, and you know, it depends. If you shoot anamorphic, you can almost always put a mic right over somebody's head because the frame is so wide and narrow. So you can do things on exteriors where you know the person's really far from the camera, but the mic is still like you know, right over their head. Whereas, you know, anyway, so it depends on also, you know, what, how they're shooting the movie. Um, Interstellar was uh, interesting. One of the things, uh, I did a lot of over-the-shoulder work on that because we went up on the glaciers and we had all the, uh, the um, astronauts in their um, space helmets. And uh, so what we did there was we, they spent a lot of time in pre-production with us figuring out uh, how to mic the helmets. And we had a guy... His name is David Raymond. David was uh, in charge of the helmets, and uh, he is actually boom. He's a boom operator that's worked with me. But he, in this, for this movie, basically his job was the helmets, and uh, Mike Primer was the boom operator. And um, and then we had uh, so in pre-production, David went in and he did all this sort of testing with the helmets and stuff, and we decided that the Sankin COS 11, which we put right on their forehead, right there's. We had them drill a little, the, the helmets were very complicated, but they drilled a little place for us to put it, and they were kind of permanently mounted in there. And then we wanted to put the transmitter inside the helmet, but the helmets, they kept redesigning them, and they got so small, there was no room for a transmitter in there. So what we did was we made a little pigtail kind of at the base, and then we had a little extension cable that went to a transmitter that was mostly in their arm. We put it in packs in their arm. Some, it depended on, they had different suits for different reasons. Uh, like on the water planet, they had a whole waterproof suit thing that was a different situation. But um, but most of the time, on stage and then when they were walking around in Iceland, uh, in, in, on the glacier in Iceland, because the water planet was also in Iceland, but when they were on the glacier, then we were able to put them in their arms because it was not waterproof. And the, it required putting a hole in it to get it into the arm. Anyway, so um, we had some issues... Uh, with the helmet mics getting, keeping the levels from overdriving the radios because the space they were talking to was like this big. It was basically sealed against their face. So it was really like that much and there was nowhere for the air pressure to go. So if they started yelling and stuff, it would just overdrive the radios like crazy. So we had the electrosonics actually have, I believe it's a zero setting or 0.5 like the, the SM transmitters. You can turn them down as low as like 0.5 or something. And we had them all on 0.5. And then after a while, I switched to the, I pulled out all the mics and I put in the sink in red dot, which is, uh, it's like a tw 10 or 20 dB down. And that really solved it. And yet I can hear when I watch the movie as we sort of dialed in the sound in the helmets. And toward the end, when he's in the Tesseract thing, like it sounds phenomenal on that because we finally had it dialed in. And then there's like other moments where I'm like, yeah, I, I hear it. And we tried different mics. We tried Countryman and DPA. There's like a couple of moments in the movie where I hear it. I'm like, yeah, that's a Countryman. I didn't like that. We pulled that out right away. But, you know, we, we didn't have any, we didn't really have any option but to try it on screen because that's when we got to try it. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, it was interesting. So we went up on the glacier and uh I think I had like five astronauts talking at the most on the glacier. I just took a diva over my shoulder, an electrosonic uh, venue, uh, what's it called, field venue, put it in a backpack, and I took a little kind of camping chair with me uh, so that when I got to wherever we got to, I would open it up and I'd put the bag on the chair. So I didn't want to put the bag on the glacier because it's ice. So I just put it on the chair and I would drag my little camping chair all over the place. And We had these... Uh, spiky things on our shoes called crampons to, so we wouldn't slide on the ice and 